Hey folks! In this video, we will be discussing the difference between PD, potential difference, and EMF, the electromotive force. So as you might remember, in our previous vocabulary video, I mentioned that potential difference and electromotive force are very similar concepts and are in fact measured in the same units. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the, the similarities and differences between these two con concepts. And by the end of this video, you will be able to compare and contrast potential difference and EMF. So let's go ahead and start by going over the definitions of these two terms again. So potential difference, to recap, is the work done when one unit of charge is moved between two points, while the electromotive force is the transfer of energy to electrons from other elements in a circuit. So from these definitions, you can see that both of these terms deal with work. It is in the definition of potential difference, and in our definition of electromotive force, we see the words transfer of energy, which is essentially what work is. Um, so both potential difference and electromotive force deal with work and deal with energy transfers. So then what's the big difference between them? So what is the difference between potential difference and electromotive force? Um, well, the easiest way to see the difference is to think about where energy is be being transferred from and what, is being, what it's being transferred to. So the potential difference involves the transfer of energy from electrons to other parts of the circuit, while the electromotive force deals with the transfer of energy to electrons from other elements in a circuit. So what we have is we have in the potential difference, we have our electrons, our, we have our energy being transferred away from electrons and into other parts of the circuit. And with the electromotive force, we have our energy being transferred to electrons from other elements of the circuit. So for potential difference, electrons lose energy. And for the electromotive force, electrons gain energy. So on that note, we can talk about our potential difference and electromotive force in terms of the energy transfers going on in our circuit. So when we talk about potential difference, we are talking about energy that is being converted from electrical energy to other forms of energy. So we are starting with some form of electrical energy. And that is being turned into other forms of energy like heat or light or sound. On the other hand, for the electromotive force, we have energy that is being turned from other forms of energy to electrical energy. So for the electromotive force, we're starting with our heat or our light or our sound, and we are getting that energy turned into electricity. So let's go ahead and talk about an example. And the first example I'm going to talk about is a cell. One example of a cell is a battery, which I have drawn over here, um, which is also sometimes called a dry cell. So um, what happens in a cell is we start out with a chemical, with chemical potential energy. So I'm just going to write chemical energy. And we have that chemical energy um, that is stored in the difference between the chemicals essentially on this side of the battery, our positive terminal, and the chemicals on our negative terminal. And what's going to happen is when we hook that battery up to a circuit of some kind, we are going to start, electrons will start flowing from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery. And so we'll get a current going and we will have electrical energy. So in the situation of the cell, we have non-electrical energy being transformed into electrical energy, which is going to then, so then we will consider the cell, uh, when we're talking about the cell, when we're talking about voltage in the cell, we will be talking about EMF because we are having energy get transferred from non-electrical energy into electrical energy. Another example we can talk about is the light bulb. So in a light bulb, we need some sort of a circuit in order to make the light bulb run. And when that light bulb is hooked up to a circuit, what will happen is we'll have electrical energy from the circuit 
that will be used to have to light up the light bulb and it will generate both light and heat. So in this situation, we would talk about the potential difference between one side of the light bulb, which I'm going to say is here, and the other side of the light bulb, which I'll say is here. Um, and so instead of talking about EMF, we'll be talking about potential difference. So let's talk about our takeaways. So first of all, both potential difference and EMF can be used to describe energy transfers involving electrical energy. However, potential difference is used when electrical energy is converted into other types of energy, while EMF is used when other types of energy are converted into electrical energy. So hopefully by now you are comfortable comparing and contrasting both potential difference and EMF. Now it's your turn to give this all a try. Happy solving!